Well, good evening. Welcome to First Baptist Church. And we are so glad that you're here tonight. My name is Mark Slaughter, and I get the joy of every day coming to work here as the music and worship pastor. And it's a great joy to be here tonight. We want to welcome you. We know we have many, many guests here tonight. And we want you to know that you're a special guest. And so if you would love, we would love for you to take uh, just a moment. There's a connection card in the pew rack. It's a blue card. If you want to just fill that out, just let us know you're here. We promise we will not con uh, contact you until we need a good offering, and then we might call you then. <laughs> you know, we would just love to know you're here. Just give us an opportunity to see who you are and uh, where you're from. And we really are glad that you're here. It's a great evening tonight and a great experience. We had a great concert last Sunday night. Amen? Amen. Andy Moses Band. And tonight, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be blown away. It's going to be an incredible experience. Tonight is not going to be, though, just a concert. It's going to be a, really a service of worship. And so we invite you to participate with us. Uh, we are pleased to have tonight the Kentucky Westland Singers here to lead our time of worship. They are directed to, by Professor Paul Oakley and Professor Dennis Jewett. And their accompanist is no stranger to us, Mrs. Joy Malone. We're also pleased to have here tonight a special guest, President uh, of the Kentucky Westland College, Dr. Turner and his wife, we're really glad to have them here tonight as our guests, and they'll be participating in the service. Well, as I mentioned earlier, this is a service of worship, and there'll be opportunities for you to participate tonight. And so when it is your turn, be inspired to stand and sing. Be inspired to read responsibly. Whatever you're called upon, we invite you to be a part of that. You'll need your order of service. Follow along with that. That will be your kind of your roadmap through the worship service tonight. I would request, and since it's a time of worship, and a special time of worship, that we just hold our applause. And we'll do that at the end, and we can give them a nice rousing, rousing applause and thank them for what they are bringing tonight to our time of worship. So as we prepare to worship tonight and to enter into this wonderful time together, let me invite you to pray with me. Would you join me as we pray? Father God, we are so thankful to be able to come into your presence tonight as the people of God. Lord, we come from different places and different uh, walks of life, but God, together here in this place, we are one, bound together by the blood of Christ, by the knowledge of God our Father, and the power of His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that indwells the hearts and lives of believers. So tonight, we give you thanks and praise, and we thank you, God, for the opportunity just to worship. Lord, it's a privilege to be able to live in a country where we can worship you freely. So tonight, I pray that you would help our hearts to be ready to respond to you to your glory, to your power, and your majesty. And I pray that the music we hear tonight would be just uh, a foretaste, Lord. We know it's just a foretaste of the glory divine that we'll experience with you in eternity. So bless this time tonight, and may we bless you. For we pray in the strong name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
optional percussion. <laughs> together, you will read the Parsons in bold. O oh God, creator of all things, by your word the heavens were made, and their hosts by the breath of your mouth. Bless everything that has breath, praise the Lord. O oh God, our loving Father, you breathed into us the breath of life, and we became living souls. Bless everything that has breath, praise the Lord. O oh God, you breathed on your disciples to receive the Holy Spirit and gave them power to change the world. Bless everything that has breath, proclaim the good news. Would you stand together as we sing? Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, hymn number 14 in your hymn books. <laughs>
Genesis 2, verses 1 through 9. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees <coughs> grow out of that ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. But in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. pray together using the words that you'll find in your order of service. O oh God, in the beginning you created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, a stirring chaos, and darkness was as deep as it was wide. A sacred wind, even a breath from God, swept over the face of the waters, and you said, let there be light, and there was light. Breath of God, where there is darkness in our world, bring light. Where there is chaos, bring your calm. Where there are empty voids, fill them with your creative, open love and presence. Amen.
voice as we sing together in number 238. Breathe on me, breath of God. Would you stand together as we sing?
a dramatic reading of Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy to them and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord.
the exception of the fact that we've been in school for three weeks, and which means we've had very little rehearsal time to do what feels like a tour program. But I'm going to do something else I often do on tour, uh, unusually early in the year. I'm going to ask our student conductor, um, who is Corey Sellerat, a senior a music education major, to come and conduct the next piece, uh, a hymn arrangement of Breathe On Me, Breath of God. scripture reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. A reading 
from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now the chamber singers will use their breath to proclaim the greatest truth that the church has to tell. Now, at the risk of sounding like Robert Fulgham, it seems simple because you learned this in kindergarten. But if we've ever really learned it, it will make our adulthood and our late adulthood and our times <coughs> of crisis very different. Just because we've heard it doesn't mean we know it. Tonight's a night to get to know it.
After the resurrection, you entered into a gathering of your disciples. You greeted them and breathed into them the Holy Spirit of God. You then instructed them to follow the Spirit, filled by the breath of God, as faithful disciples who carried out the mission of God that is for the whole world. Breath of God, Holy Spirit, fill our lungs and serve within us the ability to follow you into the world. Send us from this place to be your people, bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. And may the prayer that Jesus taught us enable us all the way as we proclaim your good news. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, invite you to stand as we sing together, O Zion Haste, 583.
our benediction prayer, followed by our choral uh, benediction. Would you join me as we pray? Father, we thank you tonight that we've been in your presence, that we at times have been overwhelmed by the power of the message of song. When words combine with melody and voice and instruments, proclamation goes forth. And we, being hearers of the word, are changed and transformed. So we thank you tonight for the message we have heard. Thank you, Lord, for the voices that allow us to experience the greatness of who you are through beautiful artistry. And now, Lord, may we continue to be inspired to proclaim the good news, good tidings of peace, Tidings from Jesus Christ, the giver of all life, how we praise you and we bless you. And we make this our prayer in the strong name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I know how to make President Turner nervous. I step in front of a microphone. <laughs> One of the joys of being a college choir director is that you spend a whole summer, a whole year, programming, planning what the music's going to be, the singers are going to sing. You can bend your knees a little bit, which fold them down. They've been standing a long time. And this year I was looking for what is the theme. I was praying about what is the theme. And I was having a rough summer with my own health issues. When I got news of the health issues that our friend and your friend and our accompanist, Joy Malone, was dealing with. So I decided that we would make this entire year a year of prayer about breath. So our choir program throughout the year has many, many pieces about the breath of God breathing life into us, breathing healing into us, breathing the things we need into us. You may not be a believer in what the breath of God can do, but I am, because I'm standing here. Amen. And by lots of reasons and lots of accounts, I shouldn't be. I believe that God is going to do an amazing work in Joy Malone's life this year, as she does an amazing work in ours. And I'm going to ask that our two institutions that love her so much together come together in prayer right now for joy and for her health and that the breath of God will do a mighty thing in her, in this church, and in our school. That is our purpose. Let us pray. God Almighty, breath of life, breath of creation, breath that teaches us everything we needed to know through the words of Jesus, breath of the Holy Spirit that empowers us in our weakness, breath that seeps into our body to bring the help for the needs we don't even know we have, breath that helps us to cry out, and then breath that comforts us when we do. We pray, God, for this church, and for this town, and for our school, that we might be the breath of God to the people of this town who need it. And we pray, God, especially for our friend and our sister, Joy Malone, and ask that you would do an amazing work in her life. Breathe into her lungs your breath, the breath of healing, the breath of restoration, the breath of life. For this and for much, so much more, Lord, we thank you, because you, O oh Christ, are indeed worthy of our praise. And we bring it to you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
some absence there. So we're glad to see uh, this new rebirth, the Kentucky Wesleyan and Choral Program there. <laughs> the Lord has really blessed Owensboro to have Dr. and Mrs. Turner and to have uh, Professor Jewett and Professor Oakley here. And so we're looking forward to continue relationships together and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And what a great privilege we have. We have a great message, so we need to take it and we need to go for it. And music is a great medium, as you just heard tonight. So just remember, now we have a, one more concert coming up in our concert series. It's on the 30th of this month, the last Sunday in uh, this month of September. You'll want to be here early for that night as we have Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. That'll be another great evening of music. Each one of these nights have been completely different, and that was a uh, part of it. But each one of them have been done with excellence uh, I look forward to our last night together. If you're here and you're a First Baptist member and you want to drop your offering off, you can on the way out. <laughs> if you're not a First Baptist member, you don't need to, but if you feel so inclined. <laughs> Just kidding. We would love to have a record of attendance. If you want to drop off one of the connection cards, that'd be fine. The ushers will be in the doors. Thank you for being here tonight. Have a great night. God bless you. Thank 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 you.